Displaced by famine, war, tribal conflict, the refugees pour into the safe towns by the thousands, hoping to preserve their lives. But the towns in northern Uganda have little to offer these wandering exiles. Work, water, and food were already in short supply. In 2003, Children's Hunger Fund President Dave Phillips traveled to Uganda with Pastor Francis Chan and a team of Americans to uncover opportunities to serve the refugees and the poorest of the poor. These children have absolutely nothing. Uh, we've been walking throughout the slum area and seeing one family after another uh, that are just living in complete poverty. The plight of the refugees broke Dave's heart. He was determined to find a way to help them to give them hope. It was there they met up with Pastor Peter Kasirivu, the founder of Africa Renewal Ministries, and first heard his vision for Uganda. Let us rescue these kids. Let's provide them an opportunity to go to school. Let us help them. Since 1991, Pastor Peter has led a movement to raise up the next generation of Christian leaders by establishing schools, orphan homes, medical clinics, and planning churches throughout the country. We asked ourselves this question. What do we want to see in the life of these kids 20 years later, 30 years later? How can we use the opportunity God has given us to change not only this one child, but to change a nation? Key to Peter's strategy is the unique influence of the local church to meet the needs of the poorest families and give them hope for the future. This well-established network of churches revealed an opportunity to create something deeply impactful in Uganda, Children's Hunger Fund's very first Mercy Network. The Mercy Network in Uganda is CHF's longest running, most mature network. And through the successes of this one, we can see the future of the others. The Master Network has been a great, great blessing to us in breaking the dependency syndrome. Every time people come in our hands, we tell them, you cannot depend on us. You need to depend on your God. Sharing the gospel is the most important part of the equation. You know what? Evangelism is the, is the reason why we do what we do because you can feed someone with food, you can show them how loving you are, but if you don't introduce them to the man who can change their life forever, then you've done a half job. When you come with, a, with love, when you come with food to that person who doesn't have food, normally that door will open. And as that door opens, you show them that I'm not just coming because I'm coming. I'm coming because of what Jesus did in my life. When a family opens the door to the gospel and the church begins to build a relationship with them, the next step is to teach them how to trust God and live a life of obedience. After they've got some few skills, we also empower them by providing what I usually call a jump start. We give them a few things they can start with, like a sewing machine, like a little pig, things like that that they can start with as they start on life or being sustainable. So when we create relationships through our mass network, and as these people learn how to walk with Jesus, even their character changes, but as character changes, they become more disciplined in life, and as they become more disciplined in life, when you teach them a skill, that skill will last. This commitment to the gospel, to discipleship and to training has created a movement among the churches in Uganda. Because of their faith and their dependence on God alone, they have reversed the culture of dependency and created a culture of self-sustainability. After the establishment of the Uganda Mercy Network, we replicated the model around the world. Children's Hunger Fund Mercy Networks are groupings of churches in a particular country or region mobilized for gospel-focused service to the poor. To start a Mercy Network, we first identify an in-country partner. Ideally, this is a like-minded ministry or a church connected to a large number of churches and also having the ability to distribute large volumes of food. Then we come alongside them 
in an effort to deliver hope through churches, not just to an individual slum or village, but an effort to bring the gospel to an entire country. And this strategy works. A recent study of the effect of missions in poor communities found that a steadfast focus on the gospel is the primary factor in permanent social change for the suffering. Areas where Protestant missionaries had a significant presence in the past are on average more economically developed today. And more to the point, the positive effect of missionaries applies only to conversionary Protestants. This means that in places where pastors focus on proclaiming the gospel and creating disciples, hearts are transformed, families are transformed, and whole communities are transformed through the Spirit-led deeds of Christian converts. Today, we are working to strengthen our mercy networks in Europe, Asia, Africa, Latin America, and the United States, and to expand quickly into more countries where the need is great. We are positioned to affect real, long-term change in the lives of poor and suffering children all over the world. We rejoice when we see families which were once in great need beginning to provide for themselves and serving others in the community.